Hi, this is uh, Bill Whitley. I'm a sports pilot CFI. Uh, we're here uh, in front of the plane talking about flying uh, in general and talking about flying the Challenger 2 behind me uh, in specific. It is not intended to be a, a lesson to teach you how to fly or a substitute for you if you're interested in flying uh, to getting direct instruction from a qualified instructor or CFI. Let's spend a few minutes talking about uh, what we find in the uh, cockpit of an airplane and uh, how we should deal with it. Uh, whenever we get into an airplane uh, that's new to us or uh, something different, you're flying a different plane or the first time you're in a cockpit, take some time to go through all of the gauges and the switches and the instruments and familiarize yourself with them before you start the engine, before you get you know, really into the flight and so forth. Uh, sometimes people think, well, you know, let's, let's go, let's go flying, and they jump in the plane and go. You don't want to be wondering where the altimeter is when you're, you know, taking off and you're 50 feet in the air. If you take a few minutes to, to have cockpit orientation to begin with, it'll, it'll save you and make it much easier and eliminate that possibility of confusion. I'm going to start over here on my left. In my uh, Challenger 2, we have a uh, GPS. This is a Garmin uh, 196. It's an older uh, aviation uh, instrument, but it's, it's great for navigation and, and telling you particularly your ground speed. Almost all aircraft, modern aircraft, will have a master switch. Uh, that, that turns the power on to the whole uh, system of the aircraft. When turning this off, it, it kills all of the uh, draw on the battery of the airplane. So. Don't leave the airplane with the master switch on. You'll run down the battery. First thing you're going to do when you when you get into the plane to uh, get involved in is turn the master power on. Okay, and that uh, gives you uh, power to the entire avionics system. Uh, above that, I've got a fuel. In this plane, we have a fuel pressure sensor uh, or meter in this case uh, that tells me what the fuel pressure is. Uh, this, 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 let, this lets me know that there's being fuel pumped to the carburetors, okay? In this plane, there's two uh, pumps. One of them is an electrical pump, which this switch here turns on, and I can prime and make sure that the float bowls of the uh, carburetor are filled, or if the mechanical uh, fuel pump went out uh, during flight, I, as an emergency, I could flip on this uh, electric pump, and it would uh, also give me uh, fuel pressure. Oh, the next and the major instrument, and probably the most important instrument you're going to have, is going to be your airspeed. When we're flying uh, aircraft, uh, fixed-wing aircraft, uh, we, need, we have to go through the air and we have to maintain a certain airspeed in order to keep the plane flying. And in this case, uh, we're gonna, we, need, we need to be flying at least 40 miles an hour in this airplane. You'll notice there's some different colors here on this. And these tell you, these arc, color arcs will tell you uh, important airspeeds in your airplane. But we're going to keep our eye on that. When we're taking off, we're going to just kind of glance at that and, and, and see when we get up to about 36, 37 miles an hour and we pull the stick back, we'll, we'll rotate. Uh, when we're flying the plane, we're going to be flying in this uh, green arc here. We're going to probably fly mainly at uh, 55 to 60 miles an hour. Uh, if you uh, uh, push the stick forward and start to dive, uh, you can, uh, you'll, you'll, uh, run the speed up. You don't want to go too fast. In this plane, the VNE, that is uh, velocity never to exceed, is 100 miles an hour. But uh, you, you'll feel it when the plane gets up there at a, at a higher speed. So we want to, you know, when we're flying along, we're going to be checking uh, other, looking out the screen, looking for other aircraft, looking at, at uh, places to navigate and the ground and so forth. But we're also going to be checking every so often and look at our airspeed just to make sure what it is. Airspeed is also critical in the takeoff. Uh, as I talked about in another segment of this thing, we want to take off and get our airspeed up to 55 before we do our climb out. And then uh, on landing, we want to make sure we're uh, in the 50, uh, 50 to 60 range, 55 would be good, to come in and do that, that final approach. The next instrument over here is our altimeter. And that tells us how far we are above sea level. So there's a little uh, knob here and a little window and you can, and the uh, tower or you can look up and get the information of what the barometric pressure is and you can dial that in 
uh, on the window, and that'll give you your, your altitude above sea level. We're about 100 feet above sea level here. And of course, when you're flying, if you want to fly at uh, 1,000 or 1,500 feet or whatever uh, altitude you want to maintain, you can watch your altimeter, and they're, they're pretty accurate and pretty uh, uh, sensitive. So if you go up and down uh, 20 or, or 40 feet, you'll see it on the, uh, on the altimeter. The next instrument here in the center here is called a vertical speed indicator, VSI, and it tells us uh, how much we're climbing or uh, descending uh, in thousands of feet per minute. So in this plane, with just myself in it on a cool, dry morning, uh, matter of fact, this morning, I was climbing at almost 900 feet a minute uh, when I took off. That's, that's a pretty good climb rate for this kind of a, a plane. Uh, and it'll also show your descent rate. So when you're getting ready to come in for landing, you can kind of look at this and say, okay, I'm descending at uh, three or 400 feet a minute, and that's a nice glide speed to come in uh, for your final approach. Uh, it is a delayed instrument. So that is, you might be climbing and it won't register until maybe a second or two or, or so after the climb has occurred. So uh, what you would first notice, for example, is if you're flying along and you push the stick down, you deload the prop and you'd, you'd notice you'd hear the sound of the engine increasing and you, want, you could see the RPM increasing over here. Then, maybe a second or two later, then you'd notice that the uh, VSI would, would indicate you're descending. So the kind of the important point there on, on this instrument is it's not instantaneous. Okay. Okay, next uh, we have a turn and bank indicator. It's a ball here, and we use that to coordinate our turns and, and to measure how much uh, uh, of a tilt the, the wings have in them in terms of the roll. The, uh, this panel over here is all the avionics. This is the uh, EIS system, our engine information system, and it tells us lots of things about the engine. Uh, and in this system, you push the display button, it'll tell you what's underneath, uh, the RPMs of the engine, the cylinder head temperature, the exhaust gas temperature, uh, the time in flight, and this is the fuel level. Down here we have a radio, and in aircraft uh, we use standard frequencies that, that you dial up with these various knobs and, and are able to talk to them. I have a little button on the top of my stick here that I can push, and it's the, the push to talk switch. It'll turn the transmitter on. When I have the headset on, I can transmit on that frequency. You'll notice this is uh, set to uh, 1229, which is going to be your standard frequency for non-towered airports, in, usually in rural areas, and that's, that's pretty common. Now, some of them will be different, but that's a very common frequency we have. Next to this we have over here is a transponder. This uh, is, is for radar. When the radar signals uh, that track airplanes uh, hit this, this will transmit, transpond out a identifier uh, showing that I'm uh, in the plane and I'm flying what altitude I'm flying. Uh, this is our intercom. Uh, these buttons here deal with the uh, squelch level of when we can mute the, the sound and then the volume. Down the bottom we've got a row of switches and of course over here to the left we have the master of the ignition switch uh, and it'll have a left and a right. Those are left and right magnetos of the engine. The engine has dual uh, ignition, uh, left and right, for uh, the spark plugs in each cylinder and then a start position all the way over here. Again, this was the uh, fuel pump, uh, the electric fuel pump for uh, boosting the uh, fuel to the carburetors. We have a strobe switch here, which runs strobes on the uh, tips of the wings. These are circuit breakers that I can pull out and, and uh, disconnect, or if there's an electrical short, they would, they would pop. I have a landing light on this plane. We don't really use it a whole lot because we don't fly at night. Uh, this is a fuel transfer switch. I have an auxiliary tank I can put in the plane and pump fuel uh, from that auxiliary tank into the main tank, so it gives me greater range. This switch here is the avionics switch, which turns on and off all of the avionics systems that are here. And again, we have a few more uh, circuit breakers there. Okay, that's basically it for, uh, for the instruments. One other thing you'll find in all aircraft is a compass. Uh, and, uh, and it should be you know, there and it'll be uh, usually calibrated with a card. This one doesn't have a card on it. Uh, and it tells you, of course, which direction you're, you're flying uh, by the compass. All right, so that wraps up uh, basically our information in this uh, challenge.